In my day, when it was time to find out what sort of tactical aircraft you would fly, the United States Army didn't make a terribly big deal about it. Though the rest of our military careers turned on the announcement, we all just gathered in a classroom toward the end of flight school at Fort Rucker, and our company commander read the results off of a computer printout. In helicopters, speed and maneuverability are a function of power, not aerodynamics. The Chinook has scads of that. My versions packed an aggregate 9,000 shaft horsepower into two Lycoming turboshaft engines. That made the big Chinook wicked fast. VNE, velocity never to exceed, for a CH 47D was 170 knots, or about 195 miles per hour. The Black Hawk and Apache were faster, but only in a dive. The Chinook would walk away from them both in level flight. Most conventional helicopters are slaves to tailwinds. The tail rotor on a traditional helicopter is just there to counteract main rotor torque and keep the machine pointed in the right direction. Whatever power is required to keep that thing spinning is essentially wasted. By contrast, the massive twin counter-rotating rotors on the Chinook funnel all that power into lift. It also doesn't much care what direction it is pointing. Semi-rigid rotor systems like those of the Cobra or Huey cannot be operated at less than one half of one positive G unloading the rotors, like hugging terrain at speed while flying NOE, nap of the earth, across a hilltop, can cause them to come apart. By contrast, the fully articulated system on the Chinook feasted on negative G's. The CH-47D model can carry up to 33 combat troops and features a 52 feet long fuselage with rotor blades spanning 30 feet each. This helicopter has a service ceiling of 20,000 feet, but can be taken to just shy of 22,000 feet. It is also equipped with mounts for three defensive machine guns, including the M60 and M240. The AFCS allows for hands-off flying in cruise mode, with heading changes easily affected by turning a knob on the instrument panel. All flight instruments are perfectly replicated on both sides of the cockpit, making the machine equally friendly from either seat. The CH-47 Chinook has a length of 98 feet 10 inches, 30.1 meters, and a height of 18 feet 11 inches, 5.7 meters. The maximum gross weight for the CH-47F is 50,000 pounds, 22,680 kilograms. It has a maximum speed of 170 knots, 196 miles per hour, 315 kilometers per hour, and a cruise speed of 130 knots, 150 miles per hour, 241 kilometers per hour. The Chinook has a range of 400 nautical miles, 450 miles, 741 kilometers, and a service ceiling of 20,000 feet, 6,096 meters. Its crew includes a pilot, co-pilot, and crew chief. The tandem rotor design of the CH-47D offers certain benefits not afforded by lesser aircraft. With a little practice, a skilled pilot could cause the machine to pivot precisely around the forward rotor head, the aft head, or the cargo hook in the middle. An awe-inspiring spiraling vertical liftoff executed at maximum power settings was called a black cat takeoff. No other machine could really do that. Pinnacle landings were uniquely cool. With the flight engineer providing guidance the aft landing gear could be precisely located on a mountaintop or something similar. Then, by setting the cyclic to the rear, the pilot could plant the aft gear and then use the thrust, what would be the collective in a lesser aircraft, to adjust pitch and maintain station. The same technique could be used to taxi the big helicopter on its back two wheels. The Chinook also made a great par drop platform. You could feel a little bump through your seat every time one of the heavily laden paratroopers left the aft ramp. The CH-47D had three cargo hooks and could carry three separate external sling loads. I once browned out in an especially dry LZ and let the aircraft drift. 
My flight engineer wisely punched off the 105mm howitzer I was carrying before it could snag in the trees. I mangled the gun and felt awful about that. However, thanks to my crew dogs I didn't die, so there's that. US Army doctrine was to push the tactical aircraft as close to the front as possible. We affectionately referred to the CH-47D as the Boeing Hilton. With so much space, there was plenty of room for the crew to lower the sling seats and use them as cots. After an extended period in the field, the inside of the aircraft begins to look like a homeless encampment, but it is still better than the alternative. Operations in the Arctic bring their own unique challenges. It doesn't take long for the aircraft to become cold-soaked at 50 below zero. Our Arctic sleeping bags were up to the task, but it was always a gut check to see who was going to be the first out of their fart sack to go crank the auxiliary power unit and get that 200,000 BTU heater cooking. I later got to fly both AH-1S Cobras and OH-58A Sea Helicopters. The HUEY had the nostalgia, and the snake the sex appeal. However, nothing can compare to the sensation of power you get when you tug the up stick in a CH-47D and feel those 9,000 horses kick you in the butt. <laughs>